Okay, I know I said the next video would be about Elden Ring, but I'm annoyed, and when I'm annoyed, everybody has to know about it. I didn't watch Dave Chappelle's last special because he's kind of a big bag of dicks about trans people and because it just wouldn't be my channel if I weren't a year late to every conversation. But the other day, the YouTube homepage suggested I watch T1J's most recent video, Does Twitter Matter?, whose thumbnail quotes Dave Chappelle, Twitter is not a real place. When Sticks and Stones came out, a lot of people in the trans community were furious with me, and apparently they dragged me on Twitter. I don't give a fuck, because Twitter's not a real place. <laughs> T1J does an admirable job analyzing the motives driving this attitude, rightly pointing out that Dave Chappelle is using whatever excuses available to him to justify not caring about whether people think he's transphobic or why. Because T1J is a much nicer person than me, he more or less gives Dave Chappelle the benefit of the doubt, translating the statement, Twitter is not a real place, to Twitter is not important. I want to do something a little different here. There are a lot of reasons to dislike social media, all of which I'm going to ignore for the length of this video. The need for validation, the magnification of outrage, the construction of feeds to take explicit advantage of addictive impulses, they're all important. But I want to dissect the very narrow question posed by Dave Chappelle's words. Is social media a real place? Let's first touch upon why this is even a conversation to begin with. Not Dave Chappelle specifically, but the broader media environment. I think it's important to point out that is social media a real place is a question created in no small part as a marketing strategy by the corporations who own social media. Companies by and large run by techno fetishists who insist that social media is a real place, that we should think of it as the new town square, as Elon Musk puts it. This aggressive PR campaign has created an equal and opposite contrarianism from people who bluntly claim that social media is only as important as you yourself make it. If you don't like what's happening on social media, turn it off. There, done. You don't have to engage. It is not a real place. The logic here is based on a few premises. Not everyone uses Facebook and not everyone uses Twitter. People don't talk on social media the way they talk to each other in person. Social media is a self-perpetuating outrage machine. And because of all these things, social media can and should be ignored completely. I agree with all of these premises, but this conclusion is absolute cat dookie. There's a name for the class of logic Dave Chappelle is drawing on here. It's called solipsism. The belief that the only things that can be proven to be real are your own thoughts and experiences. It's a philosophy that is usually and rightly considered very juvenile because it allows you to consider any assumption you have about the world as completely true as long as you just believe it hard enough. Dave Chappelle has never gotten on a plane or a bus and traveled with his body to the land of Twitter. But since when does physically going somewhere have anything to do with whether a place is real. I've been told that Spain is a place that exists, but how would I really know? I've never been there. The only way Spain has ever affected my personal life is through influence, the things that have been done in the name of Spain in the past, and whatever influence Spain holds today by the people who live there. Those events, those politics, continue to affect my life whether or not I acknowledge them and whether or not I subjectively think Spain should matter, because the existence of Spain is a shared fiction, a story the world currently chooses to recognize as true, not because the grand metaphysical concept of Spain was bestowed upon us by God, but because Spain has spent the last several hundred years proving itself as an effective and convenient system for organizing people. This is all to say that the fact of you individually individually choosing not to be on social media might make your life better, but it doesn't make social media disappear, Chappelle, you fucking pancake. Oh my God. So why do this? Why insist that social media is not a real place when it plainly is? Well, for Dave Chappelle, it's part and parcel with the idea that he's expressing at the core of his complaints about Twitter to begin with. Words alone don't hurt anybody. And if you don't like what someone has to say, all you have to do is not listen. If Twitter is a real place, that means it's full of real people. And if you're a comedian beloved for his wit and ability to see through the bullshit of the media environment, acknowledging that it's people who are criticizing you might damage your credibility a bit. Maybe even your own self-image. Like there's a reason Dave Chappelle's edgy and irreverent response to this controversy is, I don't give a fuck because Twitter is not a real place, instead of, I don't give a fuck if people think I'm bigoted toward trans people. More broadly though, if Twitter is a real place, then that means social media companies have already won. It's an acknowledgement that they are now the direct engineers of broad swaths of human communication, and all these little quibbles over online freedom of speech from the far left or the far right are screams into the void. They're feeble, desperate delusions of control deployed as a defense mechanism against the fact that the war was already finished before anyone got out of bed. The worry I have here 
is not for Dave Chappelle's reputation. My worry is that because social media is still so relatively new, we're all very primed to take very strong statements about it as being based in reality for no other reason than our familiarity with a fairly recent world where social media was not only not a real place, but didn't exist at all. If Dave Chappelle says Twitter is not a real place with enough conviction, those of us who don't care for the idea of us all being even more shackled to our phones than we already are can reassure ourselves, despite all immediate evidence, that maybe Facebook doesn't have a near monopoly on deciding how you and or everybody you know is able to make their voice heard and is daily trying to tighten their grip. I don't give a fuck, because Twitter's not a real place. <laughs> Oh, it's not a real place. Oh, thank God, I, I had to hear someone say it. Whew, I was close. I can think about something else. Social media is a tool. Specifically, it's a rudimentary teleportation tool. It's meant to be an extension of human influence across borders the way a hammer is an extension of your hand. But unlike a hammer, communication tools are infused with the ideologies of their makers. They prioritize, they organize, they establish hierarchies. They are all, in one way or another, political, because human communication is inherently political. A truly apolitical communication technology is impossible, and while that shouldn't necessarily scare us, we should be very wary of people who arrive on the doorstep claiming to have invented an impossible technology. And insisting that social media is not a real place is, more than anything, a passive acceptance of that claim. It's an argument from willful blindness that allows you to claim control over the world purely by denying directly observable reality. It's an assertion that anything not in your immediate field of view ceases to exist, that people come in sets of one, and can therefore, through force of will, remain immune to the power and influence of others. Forget that we all live under governments and are subject to whatever laws they pass. Forget that those laws are made by people with their own influences, experiences, and assumptions. Forget that we all need jobs and money and food and housing. In fact, forget you're part of a society at all. Decide you don't care. It's not a real place. The problem is not that social media is a poor reflection of modern discourse. The problem is that social media is modern discourse, with the information that comprises it being actively directed, controlled, surveilled, and harvested to be sold, all for the express purpose of continuing to make sure that social media is the primary way people communicate with each other so that certain stock lines will continue to go up. If social media companies had their way, and they are getting their way. Corporate platforms would be the only way anybody would communicate with each other. Their goal is cultural colonization, the imposition of their motives and ideals upon everybody else. The dream of social media is to conjure a real place out of thin air, and they have already very much succeeded. Have a great day.